pacing like Taylor doing. Use your force. Positive mental attitude. I'm trying. Blimey. All right, so this is video four. I've just done a couple of minutes and it wasn't even recording. <sighs> we should call this Dear John's Diary today. I've had an emotional start. I woke up to a... I posted a post yesterday. Anti-lockdown march. I've gone to it this morning. My deceased mum's youngest sister is having a dig at me. And... Uh, and and it's like I'm cool with the conversing bit, right? Right, we got different ideas, but she's come in like I don't believe COVID's real. Now I get that could insult a few people the way I said that. I apologise if you don't believe COVID's real. That's fair enough. I understand that. It's just that you know from everything I've seen, COVID is real. It's just what it's doing that seems to be inflated to me and and exaggerated. And it might not even be out and loose, and even if it is, it might not even be at all deadly. The thing is, there's so much information available that it's like, well, I'd like to see more hard science from the government institute that seems to just be dictating to us without any real evidence like i've said before i spend my time finding people who like independent researchers who show evidence right because i'm a lazy prick right researching it's hard work when you've got cross-reference everything sometimes i do it sometimes i don't because it's a lot of hard work and you know sometimes you've seen enough known enough already around something where you're like all right well i see how that works it's not you know when I'm getting more newer information, I like to try and check more, but I don't always do that. It depends on the the credibility of the information I'm receiving, right? You know, if you find very credible sources, you tend to, and they're showing graphs and information and data, like, to me, that is as believable as I can get without being in a lab next to someone who's actively doing a test or doing a study and they're speaking me through each stage so i'm following along right like there's so many different forms and ways of getting information so anyway <sighs> me auntie's coming having a pop lock on you know covid's not real and you know spreaders are there. Is, this is a problem you see because of all the fear and the hype in the media how can we even have a decent conversation when people are so heightened so my auntie then after I responded I didn't insult her in any way shape or form it's all on fucking line I haven't taken it down I blocked her because she then mentioned my mother to me my dead mum so fuck her she got blocked I'm now like anyone who gets personal in any way, sh shape or form. I'm just going to block them. I decided, do you know what, right? I've been not blocking people. Well, people have been blocking me just because I'm saying some stuff they don't like, right? This has been going on for years, right? But I've not blocked no one. I've kept all the doors open to share my information, say my piece. It's all fair enough, right? We should all be able to say our bit. So anyway, this woman, this is oh, this is why right, I'm getting angry. This is why this is video number four after that obscenity in the video before. I don't like being emotionally fucked with. I deal with it like water off a duck's back from people generally. Family members. This is what happens. Like the anger that I have comes flying to the surface and I'm enraged because she's been so emotionally and mindfully insensitive and rude. So the first thing she does was mention my dead granddad, her dead father, and tells me that positive mental attitude, I shouldn't be, that I was basically like shaming. Like for years. Since I was 27 and I got that put on my arm, I've been like, 
And I was promoting it long before that. That's why I got it on my arm. Because actually, when you look at me, when you watch me, if you could follow me, follow me with a fucking drone, that's how I act. I'm driving down the road. I let people out all over the place. I open doors for people. I speak to everyone the same, regardless. Because I show mutual respect. But when I don't get it back, I'm not so appreciative of that. But when it's like family, then I'm like, do you know what? Fuck you, I've had this my whole life. My dad rejected me my whole life because he refused to see that I'd grown up. All the time, I was just this trouble to him. Right, he went through cancer. I couldn't even be there for him when he went through cancer. I was such a troublemaker. I've never been to prison. I've never fucking... I don't, I don't know what to... Like, I was never fussed about money. I've never given a shit about money. I don't care about this stuff. It's not important. You can make it like that. I've always had a good work ethic. <laughs> right. You know, there was a period in time where I didn't like Mondays. <laughs> <coughs> I ain't calling no same card, but my auntie fucking attacked me. She mentions my granddad, tells me how I'm basically fucking shaming this, that she's never fucking you. She never took any of his lessons. She didn't sit there listening to him, taking his lessons. No, that was not her role in the family. And this woman wants to come on fucking acting like some high almighty fucking NHS worker. A fucking jumped up nurse who I respect nurses. I respect the NHS. I respect the health service. I don't have to respect all the people that work in it. It's like that old saying that some people will say. Even old people can be... Right, there's a really rude word that goes on the end of that. But even old people can be arseholes, right? Even arseholes get old and they're still arseholes. Well, so she mentions my granddad. That just... And I was like... You know, but I, like, held back. I have, like, fire venom tongue when I get angry. I'm nice, right? PMA, all of that. I ain't lying to you. But I'm also not lying to you because I've always told you I've got the whole range. And I don't hide from none of it. But I don't just let it out. But whew, a few years ago, she'd have got the full-on venom tongue. And I'd have said some really nasty stuff. But I did say something. Obviously, I wasn't just going to take that shit from her. Scumbag. So, I half let her have it. <laughs> I can't let people have it anymore because it doesn't serve me. And I don't think it's the way to do it. But if someone, especially close to me, wants to get all personal, mention, like, my dead hero, which happens to be her dad. Who the fuck, what the fuck, who brings their dead dad into a family argument like that? Because we weren't having a family argument, and that's the point, right? We weren't having a family argument. This person who just happens to have the same bloodline as me is a dickhead. So rude, so inconsiderate. Tells me, oh, don't expect to turn on your fa to your family. Uh, I've never had my family to turn to. My mum. My granddad and my nan have always been great, like pillars to me not support it's a very different thing we're all independent people the ones on the woodford side that share the same gene we're all fiercely independent and it's kind of not just the woodford side because that's what my nan's like in fact my nan's more the independent one so maybe we got this bit from her <laughs> that was the clark line so nonetheless but my mum was my she was the only one that wasn't judging Right? The others were all casting judgment over me, refused to see anything. I was always something in their eyes. Right? And, um, stop your licking now, pup. Been going for ages. It just do me head in a bit. Sometimes I ain't gonna put up with that shit, you know? Sits there licking so much. Nice. You probably hear it in the back of the video. I'll find out when I watch it back. So, yeah. So after she's said something about my granddad, and I was all calm on the response. I was responding to what she said because, I, you know, when I respond to letters, text, comments, I respond down point by point to what anyone has said. So then I get to the point where she's mentioned my granddad, and I just give a big capital letters "fuck you," 
middle finger. <laughs> Who the fuck do you think you are talking about him like that? And so anyway, I sent her some shitty response and told her I was going to block her. But I'm going to give her the re chance to respond if she really wants. So she did respond, telling me how predictable my response was. So the back half of the message was what she was probably referring to, was the fact that once you emotionally stab someone, they're going to fucking go in your face, or at least I am. So don't come and emotionally stab me if you're part of my family. You can have a good old go if you've not got my blood in your system. You can get fucked. I don't give a shit who you are. Your words roll off my back. <laughs> Family's a totally different matter. And fuck these assholes pretending like the bloodline means anything to them. So. So then she comes back with her rebuttal. Rebuttal. And she goes ahead. And mentions my mum. Oh my days, I wanted to let her have it so badly. Oh, I just want to punch her right in her face. But I wouldn't. She's a woman. I'm a man. She's tiny. I'm big. I wouldn't hit someone for their words. It's not going to happen, but... Cool, I feel that anger so deeply. can't let that consume us can we right so I got the dog went out for a walk went to the seafront oh favorite spot <laughs> oh yeah fuck it while well, it's dear john's diary saw my stepdad at my favorite walk spot today he uh he hasn't called me once since my mum died <laughs> Called him a couple of times, tried to like, let's go for a walk somewhere. I know he likes to walk, I like walking, I've got boots. I would go for a walk up downs or something. She's been dead. <sighs> Seven years, September just gone. He hasn't called me once. I saw him coming. I know my eyes are better than him. I wouldn't miss that walk anywhere. So I thought I'd just give him the opportunity to say hello to me. So I've got my dog. I'm walking along. I'm looking towards the seafront, sort of looking forward. But I'm looking yonder past him. And I'm looking at the sea. And he just goes right ahead and walks on by. <laughs> <laughs> he told me once that I remind him of, of my mum. So, you know, he's obviously dealing with his own pain, but been in my life since I was fucking seven, eight years old. Do you know what I mean? And then I saw one of my stepsisters in her car. So it was definitely him. Because I was walking down and I was thinking maybe it wasn't him, you know? And he, I'm sure he just said hello if like I was walking past him. The phone things may you know, maybe just like a you know, but no. And of course I could have said hello. Of course, I could have been the one to go, oh, Nick, how you doing? All right. But I'm the one that tried calling him and arranging stuff. He's the one that didn't. So, so dear John's diary. <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> but um, I channel my energy and I keep on going. Times are hard. You know, I don't have the time to be selfish and, you know, wallowing like, oh no, boo-hoo, poor me. But, uh, fucking hell, what an emotional morning. And, you know, the reason why I made this video is because, honestly, my go-to for the last few years has just been to withdraw and pull back and just go, Bleh. and uh, and fester with the anger for a day or two, and then I'd release it. But I'd fucking hang on to it and be like pissed off. And I was just like, no, I'm not doing that. You know, and I'm only talking in the case of family members hurting my emotions. I get particularly angry about that. So, uh, anyway, sharing is caring. Life ain't easy for no one, and I get that. That's why I say let's lead with compassion. You know, compassionate strength, and we're up on that time, my friends. So, anyway, I wish you all well. Use force, positive mental attitude, be kind with your thoughts to yourselves and to others. Keep loving your hearts for yourselves like you would for others. And let's get it. Get what, John? I 
awareness of